heart disease is the number one killer in the industrialized world, to a large degree due to heart rhythm disorders or arrhythmias. For instance, patients with myocardial infarction often develop a fast heart rhythm called ventricular tachycardia, for which the current therapy is ventricular ablation. Unfortunately, the success rate currently is very low, between 50 to 70 percent. Ablation is when a physician will insert a catheter in the patient's heart to burn a piece of tissue that is believed to sustain the arrhythmia. The procedure is very long. It's 4 to 12 hours. It's particularly difficult to tolerate for patients who are hemodynamically unstable and it's difficult to find what is the exact location where ablation should be delivered. So my lab is at the forefront of developing multi-scale computational models of the heart that incorporate function from the molecular to the whole heart. Using MRI scans, we create patient-specific computational models of the heart that recreate cardiac dysfunction. We then conduct simulations with these models to determine all possible scenarios for intervention and we expect that in the future it will be possible to couple the genomic information with the structural information that we obtain from the MRI. With our computational methodology, we expect to be able to evaluate all the possible arrhythmias in each patient and then predict what it will be the best ablation site and the optimal and most minimally invasive treatment option. Receiving the Murray B. Sachs Professorship has meant a lot to me because it has enabled me and my team freedom to embark on a high-risk, high-possible-reward project because you're saving human life if you come up with a better therapy. You truly are. Being the inaugural recipient of this professorship has been extremely dear to my heart, not only because Murray is such an amazing leader, but also on a personal level, he is the person who hired me to come to Hopkins. There have been many advances in individualized health in many disciplines, but there has never been a translation of computational modeling of the heart from basic science into the clinic, and it is our hope that we will be the first to do that.